from my kitchen here in Daphne, and we come live to you sharing beautiful recipes that we create in this kitchen. And today we are making, you know, the, uh, a wonderful soup. You know, many parts of the country, not here in Daphne, but many parts of the country are starting to get cold. In fact, there's snow. So I thought this was going to be a perfect recipe to kind of to share and um, bring in some like some warmth into the home. And this is just a wonderful recipe. I am so excited to share it with you. So um, we have created a couple of versions of this soup. The first version is going to be a ve vegetarian, vegan, wonderful soup. Um, I think that you're going to absolutely love it. So what we'll do with that recipe is we're going to put that in the Instapot that I have right here. And then we'll make a traditional style that's keto friendly. And uh, so it'll have meat. And actually the recipe, I know some of you are asking, well, where is that recipe? Well, when this video is done, I'll actually post the recipe in the feed. So it'll be posted. You'll have all the directions and everything. But we'll do the traditional one here in the milky pot. So both of them are pressure cookers and they're both wonderful pots. So I'd love to uh, use a variety of pots just so that everyone can kind of experience um, what the cooking looks like. Because at the end of the show, in the comments section, if you're watching a replay, you'll see that I'll post pictures from the very beginning to the end. And we also have one of my husband's favorite all time. He's just a traditionalist, or true traditionalist. Back here in the slow cooker, he loves things really low and slow. That's like his thing. And there are so many people who follow me that I know that you just love slow cooker recipes too. So I like them both. I don't, it, to me, I think that when you have a high heat element, um, to certain spices, you really jazz up the flavoring of what you're cooking. But the low and slow sometimes wins out too. So we love to do it all three ways um, because as you know, if you, well, if you don't know, I'm a health coach and so I really try to help people um, work in a variety of ways with their health and hitting their goals. So I'd like to give you a lot of options and I have a lot of people who are vegan vegetarian. I have people who are doing some keto, some healthy keto. That's a caveat. They're doing some healthy keto. So I thought I'd be making some recipes now that have that option. And then when we do the tradition, I'll kind of talk about what that traditional one is. So I'm going to go ahead and show you because that slow cooker has been cooking all afternoon. Let me tell you, this recipe, it being a cabbage roll soup, is so, so darn delicious. And what I love about it is that it freezes so darn well too. So let me go ahead and grab it so you can see what it looks like. It's got about a, about a half an hour left remaining, um, maybe 20 minutes. So we're, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it when the show is done. But I'm gonna show you what it looks like because it just smells heavenly. So this is the recipe that we're actually gonna be cooking in the milky pot. And it is the one that has two types of meat. Now I'll go through that when I actually show you in the demonstration with the milky. But this is just absolutely beautiful. Just a little bit more left to cook in it. And we'll be showing, sharing both recipes, the vegan and the vegetarian, as well as the traditional. Now, if you really, I'm gonna get this up close so you can see it. So if you really wanted to make this completely traditional, and my husband's not gonna be eating here tonight. So, and I'm the one that eats the leftover soup and um, I have a, a couple of people who I share the food with. Um, so I decided to make this one also keto friendly, but if you didn't wanna do that, you would actually put in one cup of rice while you were cooking. But those of you who follow a, a keto approach and take those carbs out, you know that uh, rice is just not one of those friendly keto choices. But if you weren't following the keto, keto system or doing something healthy, obviously a, a, great, a great basmati rice, um, really your favorite rice to go in that particular soup is wonderful. So. I also talk about uh, one of the things that I do in the entire kitchen before we actually get started is I put garlic cloves 
and I slow roast them at 325 degrees. Um, and this time I used an avocado oil, so that's what those look like. Those are what are remaining from all three dishes. So I just wanted to kind of show that with you. I don't usually use um, a fresh garlic. I usually like slow roasted garlic because it has a smoother flavor and it brings out a little bit more of a, a uh, mellow flavoring of garlic versus a really hard bite. And so that's just one of the things that I learned um, when I started cooking that I did. And so we'll use the rest of those cloves this weekend in anything that we actually cook. So um, if you are brand new to this community, what we love to do is say hello, who we are, where we're from. Even if you're hitting the replay button and you're not catching me live, um, please always do that because in the community it's really nice to kind of see who's who's on and uh, people get notifications so if you talk within the community while you're watching it really adds value plus Facebook has an algorithm that um, kind of says uh, if you don't have too many hearts and, and um, a lot of viewership you know the, the video doesn't get to be shared so that's the other thing is if you are new, say hello, who you are, where you're from, and hit that share button so that other people can actually see the show. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the saute feature. Oh, you know what? I just realized, oh, I didn't take out the meat version for this. So when we get that started, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grab that really quick over here. Hang on a second. Before I started, I didn't uh, have that pulled out of the refrigerator. So we're going to get a saute feature started on our pots. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit saute for this one. Start. Saute. Start. All right. So what we're going to do is you can use an avocado oil. Um, this is going to get a little bit hot. Um, you can use a grapeseed oil, really whatever your particular choice is. Because I did the avocado oil with the... Um, uh, I use my remaining avocado oil, and normally I have a spare. I don't know how I didn't have a spare. Um, but I'm using a grape seed oil to coat the bottom. So, but you can use, again, my preference is an avocado oil because I, I just think it's just um, rich with really great flavor. It's the one I use is non GMO, it's organic, it's just really beautiful. So, you're going to coat the bottom of your pan so nothing sticks. I'll go ahead and coat this, even though we're not going to turn it on just yet. Okay, and what we're going to do is start to saute just two items. We have um, some, uh, this is a very small, sweet, um, organic onion that's been diced. And we have about 10 to 12 cloves that have been chopped from the um, garlic that I just showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the bottom. Use my spatula that's for the vegan vegetarian. And we're going to go ahead and put the garlic in. I don't know about you, but I just, there's something about fall weather, winter weather, that soups are just my jam. I just absolutely can sit down. Well, I do a lot of bone broth that I drink normally, um, and I'll do that throughout the year, but just soup that is, um, it's just, it just, it's just my thing. I don't know, tell me if that's your thing in, in the, in the fall and winter. I know a lot of people were jazzed up about the chili that I just recently shared in one of the shows. So the next ingredient, sorry, I'm talking about other shows and we need to talk about this show. So the next ingredient I'm using is a jackfruit. So this is a particular flavor. It's a sweet and smoky blend barbecue. But the jackfruit is so wonderful because it's gluten-free, it's non-GMO, it's soy-free, it's vegan. It's a really great source of fiber. So we're going to use two packages of the jackfruit. And it really, you know, it, it, I use it in almost everything that I cook that's vegan and vegetarian. And so what's nice about this is that this pot gets super hot 
right away, so we don't really have to keep it long on the saute feature. When we do the meat, we definitely will be doing that. But this is just to give some of that flavor, get the um, onion and the garlic mixed into the jackfruit so that we just add and enhance that flavor a little bit. Because the jackfruit, you know, it's going to cook pretty quick. The, the entire recipe here is, is a really fast recipe. You're going to absolutely love it. But that is just, for those of you uh, that love to have some additional source of protein and fiber, because if you're vegan, vegetarian, you totally need that. And so I really think the jackfruit really hits a home run for me. And it just tastes wonderful. I just absolutely love that taste. All right, so I'm going to hit the off button. Cancel. All right. And let's go ahead and do the rest of this recipe. That's really the only difference between the recipes that we have, that between the, the vegan vegetarian and the keto. That's it, it's one, well, two things, so I'm gonna to go to the next item. But there's just two things, and you'll see it in the recipe as well. And if you are hitting it, us live, you wanna come back later on in the evening when I get all of the pictures uploaded so you can see all the pictures that we have too. Um, and if it's a share to a, a Facebook group, you'll just see, I'll come and post the, the pictures later. So always know that they'll be posted, and I just love to share all the pictures from all of the different venues, so. All right, let's go ahead and get the next ingredient. So the next ingredient we're gonna put in, we're just gonna pour in the rest of the ingredients, so it's really easy. We're using um, these wonderful chopped tomatoes. They're non-GMO, uh, Non-GMO is so critical. So let's talk about that. I always love to educate people, especially if you're brand new to the show. So GMO is genetically modified organisms, and we really don't want to have those put in our body. So you really want to look at your labels and um, make sure that you get non-GMO. Organic is always the best. Non-GMO is a must because they mess, the GMOs mess with our endocrine systems. And, you know, there's not enough studies about all the GMOs, but what we do know is our bee population is, is, is kind of dwindling. So we definitely want to do as much as we can to ask our farmers to, to do, to do non-GMO. What I also love is this, this is PBA free. And a lot of times you'll get canned tomatoes that have a PBA lining. I always look for cans that don't have the PBA lining and EPA is bisphenol A. It's an endocrine disruptor as well. So it's a plastic lining that they'll put inside of a can or sometimes a box and it leaches into the food. And so you really don't wanna do that. You don't wanna put that into your body. So you're gonna use some chopped tomatoes. I love this brand. It's a, a, an Italian brand. brand. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the entire container. Now, I do like a diced tomato in the, in the pot behind me. My husband likes the diced tomatoes, so I put in the diced tomatoes there. These are, these are chopped tomatoes, so you don't have as many um, really whole chunk tomatoes. That's the only thing with this. And then you're gonna wanna use one cup of tomato sauce. So let me grab my measuring cup here. And again, I love this brand. I like it that it's not in a can. Um, and I just, I think that the flavor is just wonderful. And again, it's organic, non-GMO. It's really, really awesome. Okay, so. I used half of this in the, in the slow cooker, so it should just be almost a complete cup of, I get it in there which is perfect. Okay. All right, perfect. All right, the next ingredient that's gonna go in is our vegetable broth. So in this one, because it's the vegan vegetarian, we're gonna use a vegetable broth. One of my favorite is Pacific brand. Um, but you know, whatever brand you love, uh, I really try to look for low sodium. And again, I look for the organic. So I find that Pacific has a really great flavor. Um, it's just, it's my go-to. So you're gonna use the entire carton, 32 ounces. I'm gonna wait to use all of it and just save the little bit that's gonna be remaining. 
once I get all the other ingredients in because we have a lot of cabbage that we want to put in. So the next thing that's going to go in is I have, I have about two and a half cups of broccoli slaw, the organic broccoli slaw. I have a diced onion, um, and it's a real small diced onion, and I have four stalks of celery that are organic, and then two um, actual carrot stalks, um, sticks, and those are organic. Everything in here is organic. And the last thing I have is some chopped parsley. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that all in. Next ingredient, let me go ahead and stir that a little bit, stir it around so that I know how much room I have left. I'm going to go ahead and do the spices because I want to make sure that they get in and not sit on the top. So let's go ahead and do that. I use, I have a very specific amount of spice recommended, but then we like things a little bit spicy, so you're going to see me do a little heavier on the spices. The first spice I'm going to use is a black truffle oil. I think it just adds such a beautiful complex flavor. Um, so if you don't have black truffle oil, white truffle oil, just any truffle oil really works. And you're going to want a tablespoon of that. Then you're going to want a quarter cup of liquid aminos. I like the coconut liquid aminos. Some people like Worcestershire, it's too salty for me and it's from soy. So this is not a soy product. I don't like to have soy in things that I'm cooking. So, um, but again, it's really a personal choice, but this tastes just like a Worcestershire without the extra salt. And this is a coconut liquid aminos. But I know that there are several others out there. There's a Bragg's that's out there. And I'll show this one close up to you so you can see it. So you're gonna use a quarter cup of that. And we'll go ahead and add in our spices. The first one is the cumin that we're adding in. Then we have a sriracha. And all my spices, they are organic. Um, this is a sriracha seasoning. They are organic, non-GMO. Pretty much I follow the same soup with my spices as well. Some of the spices you can't find that are certified organic, um, but most of the time if they, they say non-GMO, you're gonna be pretty well, you know, there's just one, like the seven spice you'll see. This is Hungarian smoked paprika. And then we have some oregano. I just love cabbage soup. It's just so healthy for you and it's, so it's low in, this is a low calorie soup, um, but it, it's just full of just the best vegetables that you can put in your body. Um, we have some crushed red pepper that we're putting in. Um, it's kind of like I have a zero calorie soup that I have uh, on one of my previous shows. And oh, by the way, if you are just joining us for the first time, this is show number 95. I can't even believe it, 95. So we are counting down. We are five shows away from hitting 100, which is just fantastic. And I put, <coughs> excuse me, I thought spice kind of came up into my throat. Next one is Japanese seven spice. This is one that they can't certify everyone is organic, I think, yeah. Um, but it is not GMO. Uh, and this is just a one, it's one of my favorite spices that I have found in, since starting my show, actually. Um, and I just love it. It has just such a wonderful flavor. Okay. And adds just complexity to the cooking. So it's really good. Um, and then, since we moved here to Alabama and to the Gulf Shores, I, and we're so close to Louisiana, uh, New Orleans, I found this incredible spice, and now since I've shown it on a couple of shows, a lot of people even up north are seeing it because it's being distributed by Walmart, which is wonderful. So this is called um, Slap Yo Mama. It's a great story, um, the, the actual story of how this spice came to, to life is on the container itself, but it's Walker and Sons, and they have uh, three varieties. This is a white pepper one, they have a really hot, and then they have a mild. And so I'm going to use just the white pep the pepper flavor. If you really wanted to take it up a notch, you could use the um, you could use the the really hot 
But I'm not going to do that because then everyone who I'm going to give some of the soup to, they won't eat it because it'll be way too hot. So you can save that one for your guests that want to just add it to the top. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is add in, we have a medium sized head of cabbage. Um, a couple, and these are organic, but they were really large, so I was really kind of surprised. So you don't want to overfill your pot. And I have a feeling, because the cabbage takes up a lot of room, that's why I didn't want to add in all of the rest of the liquid until we got most of this cabbage in. Mm. Cabbage is so good for you, and it's just one of those, oh, just one of those big things. Okay, that's all that's going to go in from that container. Now I can add in the rest of that, that um, broth, the vegetable broth. Wonderful. That's going to be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the top on to protect it. When you get your top on, you want to make sure that your knob, this vent knob, is turned to the off position where it's sealed. And that's the sound you hear when the actual pot is sealed. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that so it doesn't make the noise that we can normally hear. I'll put that spoon over there so I can have this spoon. Um, and this is done. I have to use a new one. So now it's time to go ahead and do the traditional, the traditional keto. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the beef because we want to get this up to saute and coat the bottom of it. So I'll go ahead and do that. And that'll get started. And I just want to make sure I have quite enough. There we go. So we're going to brown the meat on saute. And so some of you who do the slow cooker, I talk about this in the recipe. Um, if you're using the slow cooker that doesn't have the saute feature, you obviously want to saute your beef if you're using beef. Now I have chosen a grass-fed ground sirloin beef. It's um, just a wonderful, I mean, it's certified organic um, grass grass fed, it's just, a, it's really important. I just love, um, you know, there's no antibiotics that are, the, the, it's just, a, it's a good brand. Um, and this is one steer. So what we wanna do is get this cut open. Um, and I'm using a ground turkey for the other meat, but there are a lot of people when they make this recipe in fact, I did some research on it um, just to see what other people kind of did. And um, a lot of people use uh, pork. So I just decided that ground turkey was a little bit more healthy. So I love ground turkey. And this is an organic ground turkey. No hormones, no antibiotics. It's just one of those really good. And watch how flaky when it comes off. Just make sure the paper doesn't come with it. Once we start to brown that, you're gonna see. It's just, it just falls apart. It's wonderful. Not a lot of added, any, anything. Really, no fat. There we go, there's my towel. Oh, it's right here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're getting that sauteing. And this is, oh, this is the spoon. All right, so we wanna break up. You wanna break up the beef. So it's not in chunks. You want to have nice, nice even spoonfuls when people get a spoonful of everything. And it is heating. Yeah. All right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add, while it's sauteing, we're going to add in the garlic and the onion. Just want to get it chopped up first. about this beef is that, and the turkey, you don't actually have to do any straining of the liquid because it really is, is a low fat. Now, some of you who are real big keto, you like to use, um, uh, some recipes call for a higher fat content, but I really don't because if you're doing a healthy keto, you're getting most of your oils and fats from your MCT oil, your grass-fed butter, um, you know, just a, a really a, a, a healthy version of doing that. And so when I cook, 
I still want to use grass fed anything and you know I'm looking for just the best product that I can put into my body and what I can serve other people. Okay. That's going to start to real nice. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the garlic and the onion. Starting to smell really good. Well, it smells really good because we had that cooking all afternoon. And then we have the onion that we're adding in. And again, onion is, um, for those of you who are new to keto, onion is one of those medium, you don't want to use a lot of it. Um, but, but this is, a, you know, it was a really small one. If you had a large onion, you would just like use a quarter of it. This was a, a real small organic onion that came in a bag. So I know that you're not getting a, you're getting more of a trace when you get it in your soup. Okay, so now while it's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the spices that we added in here because I really love it when the meat can absorb the flavors. With the uh, jackfruit, it already had some spice onto it, so I didn't do it that way. So it, but again, this just adds a little boost of flavor doing it this way to the meat, making sure that the meat really binds to the, to the agents, the spices that you're using. All right, and we use our liquid aminos. Anybody who's local and you're hungry tonight, you know where to come. <laughs> I actually offered that at Pier Bar today just to see if anyone was, had the ability to come, and most of the people were not really free. So, um, I'll be freezing a lot today. But I love finding recipes and creating them so that they are ones that you can freeze, and when you thaw them, it's like, okay, what was that? Because it doesn't look, or, you know, kind of, it's not quite the same. just to make sure. I don't remember that I added in bay leaves, but you want to have two bay leaves in here. I think I'm going to open that lid. Another reason you just always want to check. So you want to have two bay leaves in any of the dishes. The thing about the bay leaf is that you want to make sure when it's done cooking, you go ahead and take that out. And so we have the smoked paprika. We have the sriracha. Pepper, just coarse black pepper. I have to stir that again. So you don't have to have the meat completely browned all the way because you are going to be cooking this dish um, 30 to 35 minutes. So as much as you can. And again, if you have a higher fat content in your meat, you definitely want to be cooking it. Okay, so we did the sriracha, we did the black pepper, and now we have the oregano. So I'm curious, what is your favorite, favorite soup of the fall? And if it's chili, say it's chili, that's great too. I'm looking for ideas of things that you would like in future recipes. Those are the kind of the reasons why I ask about it, because what the two shows ago, we actually cooked a special meal for somebody who had a birthday, and that was a lot of fun. This is the Japanese seven spice. It was fun to create that recipe just for that person, so I enjoyed that greatly. And I love it when you do my recipes and you send me pictures of it, so that just uh, makes me so happy. All right, and we have our crushed red pepper, and we have the slap your mama. I suppose I could have done one of these with the real spicy, but I think not because it, it'll be hard when you blend it all together when you freeze it. Okay, that is really getting nice. And those onions are getting cooked through. They're becoming translucent. 
So those of you who are wondering, okay, well, if this is the first show you're seeing, you're probably wondering, well, where are my other shows? Well, we actually save them uh, after, we, after we get all the pictures installed. We save them on my YouTube channel. And so my YouTube channel, if you just go to YouTube, if you subscribe, and oh my God, who's not in love with YouTube right now? Uh, it's just incredible. And I just opened an account with uh, Vimeo as well. So this is actually uploading. Welcome. If you were watching me live from Vimeo, that I uh, welcome you as well. I forget that I, I started that feature. All right, that is looking pretty darn good. So anyway, my uh, YouTube channel is Lifestyle by Laura J. So all you have to do is use that search button and say Lifestyle by Laura J. And you'll see all of the recipes. Now, when we started the show two and a half, nearly three years ago, I actually didn't, I'm having to do, redo some of those shows because I didn't put the recipe in. I just kind of, we did the recipe on the spot. And I had some great feedback from people who followed me and saying, you know, it would be a lot handier if you would just please write the recipe out. And because I create the recipes the day of the show, it's kind of, or the day before the show, um, I'll, I'll, some of the recipes I'll test out, but I know this soup is going to be delicious. Um, I, I didn't have to test this soup out, but a lot of times I'll test them out and play with them and then change up the recipe. I just turned it off because it sauteed just beautifully and we're ready to go. And I love to see how crumbly all that meat is now. So it's going to be great for each of the spoonfuls. Um, so I just love um, how you can just, you know, you can dig in and, and, and get any of the recipes that you want. But I, I love to be able to kind of create on the go because that's kind of how I am. I'm that kind of a cook. So when I get started in the kitchen, I'll, I'll add some things and decide which spices go in. And um, that's one of the beauties of having that uh, slow cooker because I can kind of test it while it's cooking and then make some adjustments. So I actually literally write up the recipe before we get the show started. Um, and that's why um, with this camera, I can't upload the, the actual uh, recipe until after we get the show finished. So now I'm going to add in the chopped tomatoes. And that is a 26 ounce container. And then we want to get one cup of the tomato sauce. We are so lucky to have these companies that have understood the need to not use PBA, use organic, non-GMO products. We're very, very fortunate. And the more we ask for that from a consumer point of view, the more I think that we'll have. So we have, like, it's just like when I started cooking vegan vegetarian for my, my followers and for my clients, um, you know, early on there weren't a lot of options but there are so many great options now um, that it's just wonderful all right so i'm going to go ahead and we my favorite in this one this is one of my favorite bone broths i think pacific is one of my favorites but this kettle kettle and fire is also one of my favorites again it's organic it's non-gmo it's just really really wonderful and this is a beef bone broth they come in chicken they come in, you know, they have a turmeric, they have, they have so many uh, flavors, really good. You want to have a bone broth, if you're the kind of person who's doing keto in a healthy way and you're using your high, high octane oil, that bone broth that has the turmeric in it, to die for. And I put some mushrooms in and it's just, it's just incredible, I don't have to tell you, it's just wonderful. So again, we're going to add in the carrots and celery and um, broccoli slaw and this one is we're going to add in as much cabbage as we can the nice thing is if you have some cabbage that's left over after you finish cooking and you release the steam you can always add in when you're serving it and have just a little bit of extra crunch which I like alright so add in the cabbage And you just want to dice your cabbage, um, take those outer leaves, core it, 
and you want to dice them. Um, there we go. That's as much as you're going to get in that one. And I'm going to go ahead and add in another container of juice. And you want to get the juice up to that fill lid. So I'm probably going to use half more container of this one. Probably. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's it. <laughs> There we go, and that's it. That is how easy this recipe is. It takes more time just to pull out the spices and um, you know chop everything than it does to actually put it into your pot, which is crazy. All right, so that's locked into place. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your timers. You're gonna set them for 30, 35 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and do 35 minutes because I'm gonna do a quick release on this. So 35 minutes, quick release and you can garnish, serve right away. I've given several options in the recipe of things that you can garnish, but I definitely recommend highly, if you're doing keto, is put really thin slices of, of um, avocado. I recommend putting in some sour cream if you like that. Uh, and then there's so many dairy-free, and I always like a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. So that's how I'm gonna garnish these, and it's just gonna be so flavorful. And if you're cooking in a slow cooker, I recommend starting it up on high. So do that for an hour to two hours. And then however many hours you have remaining, you're gonna wanna back it off and do low and slow. And if you have the time to make it low and slow and like you're doing like how I was when the kids were being raised and uh, I was teaching, I would actually keep it on low and slow and let it cook the good full eight hours slow. And we came home, did homework, meal was ready and it was just a really perfect way to, um, you know, that's what I grew up and that's how my kids grew up. But now I love it because the kids are just sending me all kinds of pictures of their, their recipes. And that's something I wanted to talk about just at the end before you all leave is, you know, I was thinking, I love to create. I love to create these recipes for you. But what's really important is I had a message from somebody who said, you know, she, she kind of, she has had her, her pot in her house and not taking it out of the box. And I said, well, what are you fearful of? Because she's just fearful of, of opening it and using it. And I said, you invested in it. Why wouldn't you just start to use it? And she shared with me that she just, she's just, you know, she's afraid to cook. Um, she doesn't really cook that much. She thought it would be more convenient just to do it and she'd become a better cook. But one of the things I'm just going to encourage strongly is just follow, find some people who are doing some cooking. There's cooking shows everywhere, and people have some wonderful recipes. You can find them, Google, Pinterest, everything. They're just everywhere. Um, so find somebody who you like, find the flavors, the kind of things that they're cooking, and dig in. And get your kids involved, because the more you get your kids involved, they are gonna, you're modeling the behavior for them. And so you're gonna be able to kind of instill in them creativity and the love of cooking. So we did that years and years ago. I mean, I used to make baby food for my kids and I had them involved from the very beginning cooking. Um, as long as they could stand next to the counter on some kind of a, a step stool, they were cooking. So don't hesitate to get your family involved because it's a wonderful activity to do. Um, do together and then when they're adults like mine are you'll end up getting pictures <laughs> in your family thread of all the wonderful things that they're creating so it's my one gift to you that I share so have a wonderful weekend that's approaching everyone who is in some of the cold weather and having some storms please stay safe um, and those of you who are still here in the South, we have a reprieve. We had some cool weather come in, so we're gonna be able to enjoy our 80 degree weather. That's low humidity. So with that said, I'm sending tons of love to all of you. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that share button. If you wanna look at the um, recipes, I'll, I'll have the pictures and the recipe as soon as the show is over and I get it disconnected from the camera and just have an incredible, an incredible, wonderful rest of your week. And we'll see you next week. We'll be live on Thursday next week, so we'll see you next week.